I am Arunachala. Geologists say I am many million years old, as old as the earth. There are others who think I am as old as the universe, as old as time and space. Some of them have come in search of me over the centuries. This is the story of one such person, a 16-year-old boy, when he came here. Who am I? He realized I was he, and he was me. Tiruvannamalai Township and Temple are on the foothills of Arunachala in Tamil Nadu. On the first day of September in the year of Christ, 1896, a 16-year-old boy arrived here. He had come a long way. Sitting in meditation in the temple mantas, before long, he found it was not all that peaceful around here. boy then discovered for himself an underground cellar in the mantam. He sat in this dark hole near the lingam, lost in meditation. When people discovered him several weeks later, he was in bad shape physically, with insects feasting on his body. But he still remained in a trance. He then shifted to several corners of the temple, spending some weeks in each place. He had not spoken a single word to anybody since he had arrived in Tiruvannamalai. However, shortly after he shifted to a small temple on the outskirts of the town, he began to communicate. He wrote out answers to devotees' questions. It was during these sessions that the boy's earthly identity was revealed. Venkataraman of Tiruchuri village near Madurai. His uncle found his whereabouts and attempted his best to call him back. The reply was implied in the boy's silence. Even as Ardra Darshan was being celebrated in the Shiva temple at Tiruchuri village on 30th December 1879, Venkataraman was born in this modest house. When the 
Venkataraman was hardly twelve. His father, Sundaramayar, an unlicensed pleader in the local court, passed away. With his elder brother, Venkataraman shifted to Madurai, to his uncle's house. He went to the American Mission High School as an average student with no spectacular achievement except as a rough and tough sportsman. One day in 1896, while at home in Madurai, it happened most suddenly. I felt I was going to die. Why I should have so felt cannot now be explained by anything felt in my body. I said to myself mentally, now this has come. What does it mean? What is it that is dying? This body dies. But with the death of this body, am I dead? Is the body I? I feel the full force of my personality and even the sound I within myself, apart from the body. All this flashed before me vividly as living truth. Six weeks after this death experience, as he calls it, Venkataraman left home, leaving a cryptic note not to search for him. He had dreamt of Arunachala and he wanted to be there. And that is how he had arrived. Soon after the uncle left Tiruvannamalai, the young sage moved his residence to another small temple on a hillock. One day, the mother arrived and recognized her child. She remained there for many days, trying to persuade him to come back. But she had to go back alone. Later, the young sage moved to a tiny cave on the main Arunachala hill, named after Saint Virupaksha, who had used the cave centuries ago. This cave became his residence for several years. His extreme austerity began to attract a considerable following. He knew the hills intimately and spent time in different caves and other parts of the hill. For three years since his arrival in Tiruvannamalai, he had remained silent. And now, a new phase started, when in response to ardent devotees' requests, he began to talk, sometimes giving discourses. Some of the devotees preserved these manuscripts, which were later published in various languages. A renowned Sanskrit poet and scholar, Ganapati Muni, by a sudden instinct, rushed and climbed the hill to meet the young sage of whom he had heard. The meeting and the advice received from the youth deeply touched the scholar. It was Ganapati Muni who declared that henceforth the young sage would be known as Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi. As disciples came from far and near, the word spread. The Maharshi's extraordinary intellectual and spiritual accomplishments were revealed to the world through books in many languages. 
the Maharshi's mother, Alagamal, left her home and surroundings and came to stay with her ascetic son. The devotees got together and built a small room attached to a cave on a higher point in the hill for the Maharshi. From 1916, for about seven years, Kandashramam became the Maharshi's abode. One day, in this ashram room in 1922, the mother was sick. The Maharshi sat by her side the whole day long till the end came. A disciple remarked, she has passed away. The Maharshi corrected, no, she has been absorbed. A modest thatched roof samadhi was built for the mother on the foot of the hill, which later developed as a temple and as the nucleus of the Ramanashrama. his eyes, there was no discrimination whatsoever of caste, creed, religion or race. He was accessible to anyone who came to him. Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi's message and teaching is simple and direct. It does, however, need determination and effort. To him, all men are already realized souls. You have to merely remove the ignorance, the ignorance of not knowing yourself. The realization of the self, which is distinct from the body and the ego, can be achieved here and now by unswerving self-inquiry with the question, Who am I? There is no presupposition regarding the answer. The question, asked in right earnestness over a period of time, leads to realization. The Maharshi had less use for theoretical abstraction. As you cannot learn swimming by postal tuition, you cannot pursue spiritual inquiry by philosophical conceptualization. It has to be by direct practice of self-inquiry, leading to an experiential understanding of reality. The Maharshi arrived at such an understanding without the influence of textbooks, old or new. If his teaching was identical with the non-dualistic theories of ancient Rishis, it is not because of their influence, but because he discovered them through his own experience. Indeed, Bhagawan's grace extended beyond the human family. His identification and rapport was with all living things. Peacocks, cows, monkeys, dogs, and even snakes on the hillock treated him as a natural master, coming to him to play and receive eatables from him. In 1949, the Maharshi's physical condition began to deteriorate. He underwent an operation for tumor, which was found to be malignant. The Maharshi never asked for treatment, but allowed his disciples to have their own way. In spite of excruciating pain, he remained smiling and calm. On 14th April 1950, he attained Mahasamadhi. Exactly at the time of his Mahasamadhi, the observatory reported 
an unidentified meteor. The sparkling, radiant meteor flying across the sky was noticed and reported by several thousand people all over South India. He had laughed and said, but if you cease to identify yourself with the body and realize the true self, this confusion will vanish. You are eternal and others also will be found to be eternal. Until this is realized, there will always be grief due to false values. Yet people cry. To his devotees, he is so very much there in the ashram. His presence is deeply felt. Kalandenu dirupai Aruna chala Kalandenu dirupai Aruna chala 